Will you please put your hands together for Mr. Jack Thompson? You're a self-made quintessential Australian bloke. Oh, when it comes I'm, to that. I'm the quintessential Harry. When Hal came to me, he wanted me to play the father to this American. And that's uh, all the money had come from America to make it happen. And then, literally, one of the investors died. And then it was all over, and young uh, Golden went on to do that and do that. And in the meantime, a young Australian actor called Russell Crowe had been interviewed in a magazine called New Idea, in which they said, everything seems to have gone your way so far. You did this and that worked, you did that and that worked. This is well before you know, his Hollywood success. And everything seems to have fallen into your lap. And he said, yeah, except for that part in the picture with Jack Thompson. And so Hal came back to him and said, you remember that part you wanted, Russell? <laughs> It's just a fabulous piece. It's a fabulous piece about people. No one can see that tale and pretend that it's not about love. He does it by having Harry, the man that everyone would identify with. There's a wonderful moment. After Harry has the stroke, you think, ah, he's not going to talk to me anymore. And that thing about the, uh, you see, it's a play. So all of those lines are asides to the audience in a play. You can talk to the audience like that, but in film you can't. And we, we attempted initially to do those lines looking at the camera, thinking those lines and doing the lines over, and then we watched that in dailies and it didn't work. You actually have to remove that wall and turn to the audience and look directly down the lens and say, my favorite line. The trouble with having a stroke is that people treat you like a fuckwit afterwards. In that moment, you are reconnected with an intimacy. It's fantastic. Then I was really knocked out. I was at Sydney airport and uh, there was a couple over there, an elderly couple. The man came to me, he said, uh, I just want to thank you for us. I want to thank you for portraying an elderly couple who could really love each other. Whoa. Take a look at that film again and understand that he is this man who's lost his wife with his son about to leave home, he finds someone and they come together and it falls apart. And this couple said, I just want to thank you for having people understand that at 55, 60, whatever, you could fall in love. So uh, it's a story to me about love Nothing more. Was there a flip side? I mean, I know... Oh, yeah, there are plenty of negative reactions. Guy came up to Russell at a party. He came up and he said how outrageous it was that Russell was playing the part of the, my gay son and, you know, there were fabulous gay actors there who could have done it. And Russell said, oh, come on. You guys have been playing straights for years. You know, I was like, come on. <laughs> Your sexual proclivity has nothing to do with it. Give me a look at the script. Give me a look at your work. Let me see what that's about. And the question is, who are you? You know, you can find men who are intolerant, and you can find women who are intolerant, and you can find moments in your life associated with love when it all turns to a heap of shit and you may feel for the rest of your life, there is nothing worth going for. With this picture and this script of David's, let you know 
that it is worth going for. And that in the end, it is about love. And it's a very simple and tolerant and generous quality. I want to change the pace just a little bit. Ferry drivers. Um, I think the last bastion of what it means to be in Sydney is catching a ferry. Yes. Uh, as, as a kid, the, the, the ferry was a, a wonderful, large and romantic part of my life. It was fantastic the world of the ferry. So being a ferry driver, it's interesting that as a result, quite recently, um, one of the ferry crew came down to me and said, uh, Mr. Thompson, our skipper would like to have you up on the bridge. He said, as far as the skippers of family uh, of the ferries in the Sydney Harbour are now concerned, you are one of us. Like, awesome. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I'd abuse that privilege so much. <laughs> That's cool. I'd just like to close off with one last thing for you, Jack. What's the greatest lesson you've learned through this extremely bizarre career? Let's face it, we're not a plumber. We're not, we, we, you make believe. There's a line of um, my father, John Thompson's poetry, in which he says, let me say what you would say, or else of no worth. And as an actor, that's what I would do. Let me say what you would say, or else of no worth. <laughs>